speed locks and the Hoosiers, the Larry Hoovers. Damn, she looks good. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Another windy day in Amarillo. I got the little thing on the mic, so hopefully it helps a little bit, but we just finished this uh, 2022 F-150 and it already had a Whipple on it and some other mods, but it came to us to get kind of cleaned up and then he wanted to take it to the next level. So it had um, like the JD's fuel system, just thousand cc injectors and like a three five pulley and a tune by somebody else. Um, so we went ahead and did a converter, built trans, uh, our trans cooler, our built trans. Then we did a 10 rib kit, which they don't make a 10 rib kit, so I'm gonna show you guys that real quick. And then also another thing they don't make yet is if you, any shops or any of you have installed yourself, um, larger injectors than FIC 1000s, they actually don't fit with the Whipple. So a lot of people haven't been, they've had to grind their Whipple. So actually we got the first or maybe second test set of injector adapters from FIC that goes on the bottom, take the top ones off, and they fit like a glove. So no more grinding on the Whipple. I didn't really want to grind on this Whipple, so the timing worked out perfect. I reached out to FIC, said, hey, we're doing larger injectors than 1000s, and I really don't want to grind this Whipple. What can you do? And they literally had just finished um, testing a set of these adapters. So the only thing FIC did tell me is that FICs have the extended tip Oh man, it's really dusty. We still gotta clean it. <laughs> have the extended tips, so they work a little bit better with the adapters, supposedly. But, excuse the dust. It, we had like a huge dust storm the other day, so we still gotta clean it. But, anyways, there is the Whipple. Oh my gosh, so dusty. <laughs> so, there is the 10 rib kit. Dash 10 feed, circuit breaker. Put the circuit breaker right there. We like to do that just as a protection deal. That way, that'll pop before anything else. Kind of saves your stuff. Dual regulators. Um, yeah, pretty normal. But we do have our Stage 2 Trans in this. And our large, large Trans Cooler Kit, which have done really well in these trucks. And so, yeah, I think the biggest difference, though, was that we did the 10 rib. And we did the larger injectors without having to grind. So, maybe Whipple will come out with a 10 rib kit. But on the Gen 3s, the 18 to 20 F-150s, you could just swap the Mustang timing cover over and all the Mustang stuff, and then you could use that 10 rib kit, obviously, and it would bolt right on. But with this being a Gen 4, it's a different size. You can't just swap the covers over, so, because they don't have a 10 rib kit. So, um, yeah, other than that, we didn't make any crazy changes. Um, I think the biggest things were doing the trans, doing the fuel system, the injectors, and the 10 rib kit, which the 10 rib kit took us a while. So, this is Jason's truck super badass truck he was real patient with us with the uh trying to figure out the 10 rib we haven't done that before since it's retrofitted and then waiting on the fic injector adapters so let's go ahead and start this thing uh ma'am could you turn it on give the people a little you know what it sounds like oh there you go thank you, thank you. he does have nitrous too but we're not using it <laughs> because uh, he has like, he's got some bullet mufflers back there. So it actually sounds really good. Usually the whipples are like obnoxiously loud, but this thing sounds really killer actually. It just looks right. The hoosers, beadlocks all the way around. This thing is bad. Dave's about to launch it. in four-wheel drive, you know? <laughs> Let me do that again. All right, I'll I was just thinking thing. for a ride, but okay. Yeah, maybe next <laughs> Oh my! 
bounce, I gotta make some suspension adjustments. That felt way different than your truck. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm on to do with that. I know, but wow, I just wasn't expecting that. My stomach went, whoa! <laughs> Alright, we'll oh. do a little, I'll roll into it. So the oh, this good. angle, man. You gotta cut. Ready? Ready. Oh shit, I didn't backwards. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. typically don't like posting the draggy videos because our air here sucks and I swear every time I post something people don't understand how elevation and DA works so but it did go 158 60 foot it's pretty legit and then I let off right before the eighth mile but this thing shits and gets it but this, I want to take Kennedy for a ride because I really haven't taken her for a ride in any of these four-wheel drive trucks we've done uh, but man that's pretty legit so I'll post up a video. So this truck did a 158, 60 foot. I let out right before the eighth mile, I think, and it did like a 670 at only like 98 miles an hour. Uh, Is it recording? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, but the DA today is 4,800. So, two weeks ago, I did a hit in the black truck, which is also four wheel drive, but it's a twin turbo on three kit with upgraded turbos. Um, the boost gauge read 17, but that boost gauge always read high ever since we built it. Just, I don't know, the brand of boost gauge it is, it's not an AM. Now I only use AMs. Um, so in the logs, it usually showed, would show like one to two less. So 15, 16 pounds of boost. And the DA that day, I'm gonna post the video in here. I usually don't, because people don't understand elevation, because they're dummies. But it went a 162, 60 foot. It went like 640s to the eighth at 112, and it went 99 at like 140. Um, and that day was 4,400 DA. So. So people don't understand that we live at elevation here in Amarillo, Texas. So that's why I hate posting draggy videos on social media and Facebook and all that stuff because these people will post the same setup and they'll be like, oh, I ran a 9.6 or 9.7. And uh, well, they were in like 500 feet of air. They just don't, no one understands how that stuff works. So, uh, but the black truck got picked up. It's running really good. That thing could definitely run like a 9.7 here probably if I turned it up. Because uh, that truck, we've had it on 20 pounds of boost before. Um, just that run, I had it turned down, making sure everything looks good. But huge shout out to Jason. This Whipple truck is badass. They could actually pull it down too. This is only on a 335 upper. So um, they can actually, I'm waiting to see when they take it down there, get a data log because they live in a little bit better air, get a data log of it down there, and then everything looks good. We'll send it off to Lund and we'll um, get the approval and we'll send them down a little bit lower pulley so they can turn it up just a little bit more. But this thing is so much damn fun on the street. If you guys haven't ridden in a 4x4 F-150, they are so much fun. So a lot of people do ask me all the time, oh, what would you do, Turbo or Whipple? Listen, if you don't understand or can comprehend how to work the boost controller and change it all the time, because you do have to change it all the time, if you just wanna get in, go fast, and fuck around on the street all the time and be pretty decently fast on the track, just get a Whipple, build it right, build it right the first time, get it tuned by somebody really good with Lund, get a built 10R, and they're so much fun. But if you wanna go a little bit faster and you like the joy of like dialing things in and playing with the boost controller all the time, get you a twin turbo kit. We offer both, we install both, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. See you guys on the next one.